All right, guys, today we are talking about the five major limitations that I think that you should know about when you're considering buying the Canon EOS R. But before we get into that, I want to introduce you to a new short segment that I'm adding to some of my videos. This short segment is gonna be about enhancing your creativity and different strategies to do that because I want my channel to be a place for people to uh, be inspired and become more creative along with the educational piece about uh, photography and video and camera gear. So if you don't wanna watch this segment and you just wanna to skip to the Canon EOS R limitations, then I'll put the time that you can skip to right here. All right, so today's tip to enhance your creativity is to meditate. And that's definitely something that is common knowledge, but from personal experience, I know that the majority of people that I talk to that want to meditate don't actually get around to doing it. And I think that in today's society where technology is at the forefront and we're really just kind of consumed by it, that the skill of meditation is is really, really important. And I really just think you need about five to 10 minutes a day where you are actually working on the skill of, you know, slowing down your mind and, and clearing your mind of these, you know, extraneous and uh, excessive thoughts that we have throughout the day that are often unconscious and really learn how to transition your brain into a uh, more creative state where you're able to problem solve and, and gather ideas in a quick and efficient manner. If we think about those times of day where we are really creative, like right in the morning, after you wake up, or if you wake up in the middle of the night, you know, personally, those are the times where I'm able to come up with these great ideas or problem solve certain issues with ease because my brain is already in that state to do those things. So meditation to me is really just the ability to transition to that really creative state throughout the day. So I think if you're consistent with five to 10 minutes a day um, where you're really focusing on that skill, that you're gonna start to see the benefits pretty quickly. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that quick segment on creativity. Uh, let's jump into the Canon EOS R limitations. But before we do that, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to my subscribers. And, um, you know, those of you who are watching this who haven't subscribed, I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers by March 1st. So I think I'm only 25 subscribers off from that goal. But uh, if you like this content, definitely consider helping me out and subscribing. Okay, let's get into these five limitations of the Canon EOS R that I think you should know about before you buy this camera. Limitation number one, the 4K crop factor. So if you're going to be shooting a lot of video with the Canon EOS R, you should know that when you're shooting in 4K, you're going to have to work around a 1.8 times crop factor, which can kind of be a pain if you don't have the right lenses. Now, even if you do have the right lenses, like right now I'm shooting on the 15 to 35 RF lens, you're still going to have to take into consideration things like distortion and, you know, how the facial features look when you're close up like this. You know, my nose is already so big. And also, if you don't have any fast glass, you're not going to be able to uh, get as much creative latitude with your out of focus areas as you would if you were actually working with that full frame. Most of the time, if I'm shooting on the Canon EOS R and I'm just trying to take a quick video or I'm vlogging, then I'll just stick the camera into 1080p because then I still get good quality video and I can work with the full frame. Now, if you're looking at the R6 and the R5, you will be able to get that full frame footage with 4K. So that's something to keep in mind. I think on the R6, there's a, it's like a 
1.1 times crop, but it's not really noticeable. Okay, limitation number two for the Canon EOS R, and this one is another one for video shooters, and that is when you're shooting in 120 frames per second, you're not gonna be able to get continuous autofocus. And I found that out the hard way when I was actually in the middle of shooting a short video. But maybe you don't need 120 frames per second. You can still shoot 1080p and 60 frames per second. So, so if you are gonna use the EOS R for those high frame rate shots to slow down the footage afterwards, you'll either have to make sure that your subject stays in that focal plane while you're taking the shot, or you stop down the aperture so that more is in focus and your subject is likely to stay within that focal plane. And one other thing to note is that the Canon EOS R only allows you to shoot 120 frames per second in 720p, so the quality is not gonna be that great. Again, if you're comparing it with the EOS R6 or the R5, the R6 is gonna allow you to shoot in 120 frames per second in 1080p with continuous autofocus, and the R5 will allow you to shoot in 4K 120 frames per second with autofocus as well. So um, if that is a big determining factor, then you might wanna stay away from the Canon EOS R. All right, so limitation number three, and I was going back and forth on including this in this video, but for me, it is a big one. And that is the one card slot that you get in this camera. It is a real bummer for me. And not only because redundancy is really important for me in a photo session, but I also had an SD card fail on me a couple days ago when I was shooting video with this camera. So it happens. I know there's a lot of people that say it doesn't matter and SD cards never fail, but honestly, it just happened to me. So, you know, I want to let you guys know that it can happen. I lost the footage. Luckily, it wasn't a paid session but I still wasn't able to recover the footage, which is a bummer. And I didn't want to pay money to do that. So uh, it happens. All right, limitation number four. And this one is a big one, especially for you photographers that have transitioned from Nikon or Sony to Canon. You will definitely notice that if you go with the Canon EOS R, the dynamic range that you're working with isn't nearly as good the dynamic range that you're working with isn't nearly as good as the dynamic range on the more modern sensors of the Nikon and the Sony cameras. And, and you know, actually, I'm, I'm not even gonna say modern because I remember shooting with a really old Nikon D5000, which was a crop sensor DSLR that seemingly had more dynamic range than this Canon EOS R does. So that being said, I, I think that the amount of dynamic range that you get on this camera is good enough and a lot of people will find it sufficient. But if you're in situations where you're taking landscape pictures and you don't wanna take a tripod with you to uh, do some of that exposure bracketing and then make an HDR photo afterwards in post-processing and you just wanna work with one single raw file and and just kind of lift the shadows and drop the highlights you're not going to be able to get that much out of this camera without those shadow areas becoming really noisy and same thing with portrait work a lot of people will default to saying that you should always just make sure that your lighting is good whether it's ambient or if you're using external lighting but honestly that's not the case and it hasn't been the case for me because there's certain situations where you want to capture a moment but your lighting might not be the best. So in those cases, it's nice to have that option to be able to try to recover that file and lift those shadows without the file falling apart. But like I said, I think the dynamic range is enough for most people in this camera. All right, last but not least, limitation number five. No, it is not the crappy shutter sound, but 
For photographers, you're gonna notice that when you're shooting in the continuous high burst mode, which it's funny calling that because you're only getting up to five frames per second when you're in the servo or the continuous autofocus mode. But whether you're looking through the viewfinder or the LCD screen, you're gonna notice that to compensate for blackout, the camera is going to show you the previous picture that you just took. So it's, it's only gonna be showing you those five frames per second. And while you're trying to take a picture, you'll notice that you can only see the picture that you previously took. So it's always like it's lagging behind. And if you're trying to anticipate where a subject is moving, like if you're doing family photography and there's kids running around, you really just can't do that. And you have to kind of guess where the subject is going to be going. Same thing with wildlife. Now, I wouldn't call this a wildlife camera, but you can still use it with those longer lenses. Um, you're gonna have a hard time really tracking where your subject's gonna be going due to that issue. So the R6 and the R5 will definitely be better in that regard. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope that this helped you in some way. And if it did, definitely help me out by subscribing. All right, I'll talk to you later.